Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go, if we will. We want to, we want to uh, go to the Philippians, the third chapter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not what I want. What I want? What did I want? I wanted. Hallelujah. Y'all just hold on just a second. Philippians chapter four. There we go. Hallelujah. Philippians the fourth chapter. We're in, um, you know, Paul's wrapping up this, this particular letter, and, and it's, you can kind of say some of these things, are his, you can say it's his doxology, or it's, can we turn the fans on at least and get some cooler air blowing? I mean, it's not 25 out there tonight. It's, uh, it's actually 70 tomorrow. Uh, then we're going to go back down. We're going to drop back down to the 40s. It's, it's, it's the way it happens this time of year, all right? But let's look here. Paul's kind of wrapping this up, and he kind of gives his doxology, and he says, um, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, I'm sorry, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, that word lovely means acceptable. You know, kind of, well, what, what does it mean, lovely? It means acceptable. Um, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, that also means valor, like, and it actually means manliness. Whatsoever things are manly, <coughs> you know, there's valor in it. If there be any praise, think on these things. Paul says something very different here. Um, he says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Hallelujah. Those things you both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Actually, I should have started earlier up. I, I, I guess I, I just got kind of further down. I, I kind of got hung up studying there last night, just kind of looking over those verses. Just, uh, just I wasn't even going to talk about that today. I, was just, I got hung up down there. Back up here to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Man, now, if Paul was saying the Lord's at hand 2,000 years ago, how much more hand is he today? Amen. See, when you, when you become so aware of spiritual things, natural time and natural things don't carry the same weight as spiritual things. Okay? You understand a day is, is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day with the Lord. So he, you know, he's the Lord at the hand, and to him and spiritual things, that's only two days. He said, two days ago, he said that spiritually speaking. You know, um, I heard Mark Brzee say this. He, you know, he had heard it from someone else. I don't know who he heard say it, but he said this. He said, you know, time is like the spokes of a wheel. And God sits at the hub of those spokes. And he can look over here and see the future. He can look here and see the present. He can look back and see the past. Because he sits in the middle of all that. And each one of those spokes is time. Well, because God is outside of time. Yeah. He, he, time is what we deal with. He exists outside of that. Hallelujah. That's how, for whom he did foreknow, look to the future. He did predestined and went back into the past. And, and predestined those who he foreknew to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, you're, I mean, don't go to all Star Trek on me, but, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. God, God exists outside of that. That's why he says those he foreknew, he predestinated. What? Back here, he went back here and said, okay, I know that they're going to accept Jesus. So I predestined them to be conformed to the image of my son. You've got people who believe in such predestination. It's like God can't see anything. So he just go ahead and says, I'm going to make everybody who's going to get saved get saved. Everybody who's not going to get saved, I'm going to make them not get saved. You know, <clears throat> it's my choice and I'm going to make it. And that doesn't line up with what the Bible teaches. <clears throat> he four new people. Amen? Amen. All right. Rejoice. Let, let your, the Lord is in hand. Uh, be careful for nothing. That means don't be anxious. But in everything by prayer and supplication. This is really what I was after. I was, I was after these verses. But prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and, my, <clears throat> and minds 
through Christ Jesus. Now, uh, you know, supplication means uh, request, make a request. You know, I, I, I just I thought, well, I've never looked up that word. Just kind of uses one of the forms of prayer. Just, you know, we do that kind of stuff, you know? Go through life and you go, why didn't I ever? How, how many know there's a place up in, up in the Midwest where it calls the Acme Manufacturing Plant? Well, how many remember Roadrunner and, 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 and the Coyote? Where were they always getting their stuff from? They Acme, you know, whatever. Well, just last week, somebody went during the middle of the night and carved on the front doors or somewhere on the building uh, the Coyote and the Roadrunner. Oh now, the owners of the company came in and thought it was hilarious. They're going to leave it. And they, their question was, why didn't anybody ever think about it before? <laughs> you know, why, why 50, 60 years down the road, somebody went, let's put the road running the coyote up there. And they went, it's a great idea. We're leaving it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, all the bombs and the tea and all the stuff that the road coyote uses to try to catch the road runner came from Acme. You know, hallelujah. So somebody finally, after 60 years of the cartoons, decides, let's go put it on the front doors. All right. So, you know, but the supplication means make a request. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Through prayer, you know, and then there's different types of prayer. We don't want to get into all the different types of prayer. You can just go. We, we, talk, we talk a lot about the prayer of faith, which is really the prayer of believing and receiving. We call it the prayer of faith, but it's done, you know, all prayer should be done in faith. But we refer to the prayer of faith is, uh, is the prayer of believing and receiving. You believe God promised you something, you, you pray about it, or you request it, and you, you receive it. That's the prayer of faith. But, you know, for supplications, you know, we can, he says here about prayer and supplications with. Now, with thanksgiving. Now, so we've kind of always gone, well, let's just thank the Lord for it. Thank you, Father. I have it. It's mine. I have it now. It's done in Jesus' name. But that word means, let's take a little bit deeper. That word means to the Greek, grateful, with a grateful heart. So with your, by your prayer, and your request with a grateful heart. Not just offering up thanksgiving, say, thank you, Father, it's mine. You see, we can do that and not come out of our heart. We can do that because we're mimicking just, you know, a, a prayer or we're just saying words. And we shouldn't. But sometimes if we don't, if we don't take the time to understand what he's really saying here. He, Paul's saying here, he says, he says be, don't be anxious. In everything. Now, what's, what's he saying here? No matter what circumstance you're in, don't get uptight about it. Don't, don't squirrel out over it. Yeah. Don't, don't go down and go into the doldrums and, oh, my God, what am I going to do? He says by prayer, enter into God's presence. And, and, and you know, listen, I'll tell you something here. Uh, sometimes prayer is, you know, because it means communing with the Father, communicating with the Father. We have different types. But I think when we enter in, when you enter in with just prayer to start off with, we enter in getting into his presence, his presence. It's heaven to me. Yeah. See, if you're going to get anywhere in prayer, you're going to have to get into his presence. Yeah. Now, I know. See, you, you, we, we charismatic word of faith people. Uh, sometimes if we're not careful, we'll, we'll get so flippant about that that we don't. We say, well, all I got to say is in the name of Jesus that I'm in his presence. And there's truth in that if your heart is involved in that. If you approach it from just, you know, a kind of a mental thing, then you're not going to get there. We need to enter into his presence. Remember, uh, let us enter his courts with thanksgiving and enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. We don't even sing that. Anymore. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. We hadn't, we hadn't sung it so long, I can't remember the words, are they? Amen. You know, we're, we're to come, first of all, into his presence before you make supplication. Before you make intercession, before you make request, we come into his presence. We commune with the Father. Amen. We're so, you know, we get down such a path. Well, all I got to say is the name of Jesus, Father, I think I got to see this and run out. And you know, there's a lot of times he's going to say, he's going, but, 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 but he's wanting to say something. In Jesus' name, I got to hallelujah, thank you. I'm boom. You know, it's a two way street. If you're communicating, it's a two-way street. That means you let God talk. Can I say something? Let me get the center camera. A lot of times when you don't listen, it's because you don't want to hear what God has to say. Was that really weird on the camera? Okay. Was it effective? All right. 
A lot of times, you know, people don't want to don't want to take time to hear what God has to say because they want to throw their stuff out on the table and run out and expect God to do their their list. But they don't want to hear him say, you know what, you need to think about this one. You need to meditate on this. This may not be exactly what's in your best interest or, you know, well, boy, I, I want this and I want that and I want a better job and I want, I want, to, li I want to live in Hawaii. Some of you country folk get that. We don't know Hawaii. We know Hawaii. It's not Arabs. It's Arabs. I remember we had, I had uh, uh, Delano Wilson. Mr. Wilson was, my, was our, uh, our history teacher in high school. And he, his, his thing was always bang, bang, you nut. You know, if you said something wrong, he went bang, bang. You know. And we used to always say, uh, we say Arabs. He'd say, bang, bang, it's Arab, you nut. <laughs> we still call them Arabs. All right. Yeah, we're old country folk. We don't talk right. You know, hallelujah. You know, you think I talk bad now. You should have heard me 20 years ago or 30 years ago. You should have heard me in high school. It was, it was bad. I mean, we made, we, I, I made the country folk sound northern. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, well. But we, when we come to God, when, we, when we're going to be with uh, and, and get into his wisdom and get into his presence, we first of all have to come with a willing heart to hear what he has to say to us. That's important. Did y'all know that? That's important. If we don't do that, we're going to get in trouble. We can't throw the list on the table. In other, in other words, we've already decided how everything's going to be. We throw our list on the table, and we're going after it. And God's going, yeah, you, well, you know this. And you're, go, you're, you're out the door already because you said thank you. Yeah. Hello? And you said thank you, and you're out the door. So he says, and don't be anxious in anything, but with prayer and supplication, I'm making a request, with thanksgiving. Everybody say, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Thanksgiving means with a grateful heart. And then you say, thank you. Are you all ready now? Thank you can be said without a grateful heart. We can say thanks, and we really don't have a grateful heart about it. You know, you should have done it anyway, but thank you. Or we expected it so that you get a courtesy thank you. Thank you. Hey, you ever had that happen? You got mad about, about something you, you got, went to, got dinner, or you got something, something happened, <clears throat> and they, they're making it, it what they think is right. You're not really happy about it, but you kind of go, well, that's all you're going to do. Well, thanks. You know? And they say, I hope you'll come back, and you're, you're, like, you're kind of like, right. We can't, we can't approach God with that kind of mindset. We have to come, and when we, when we come into his presence, what are we coming? Did you know one of the most important things you can do coming into the presence of God is empty yourself on, on the altar before God and say, Lord, I'm all yours. How you want it, how it should be. Forget my desires about these things in life. What is your desire for me in these things? Now, that's not an easy thing to do because every one of us in this room have things we're not really, really, really ready and, or willing to give up yeah. in life. Some of you don't want to get, and I'm going to tell you something, you know, I mean, I guess if the Lord told me tomorrow, don't ever drink a glass bottle of Dr. Pepper ever again as long as you live, I would have to say, okay, Lord, I'll do it. But man, I don't know how willing I would be. I like the glass bottle of Dr. Pepper's made with the real sugar. I'll drive it to West Jefferson and get a case of them because they're, they're, they're just awesome. But if you say don't ever drink one again, I mean, I, I'd have to, I'd, my flesh is going, mm, 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 but, but they're so good, you know? Can I have one in the plastic bottle? <laughs> now, if you tell me to give it the plastic bottle, is that okay? Lord, that, that works. Because I'd, I'd rather have the other ones. So our lives have to stay constantly coming before God as on the altar, as it were, open and whatever you want. Then, once we've come through that, submitting. See, that's really we're submitting and yielding to his will. Before we ever start making requests, we have submitted to his will. Amen? Then we begin our, you know, we make requests or, or things that we need or whatever. But then even after all that, we come back with thanksgiving. The grateful heart. You can't ever leave with your communion with God in the right way unless you've left with a grateful heart. And we're about to celebrate uh, in America. We call it Thanksgiving. I, I think the Canadians celebrate about a month earlier than we do. 
three or four weeks or three to four weeks before we do. They, ce they celebrate sometime in October, uh, Canadian Thanksgiving. But we're, you know, and, and of course we, we have all of our pictures of the pilgrims and the, and the native, the Indians. All right, we can Native Americans. Those guys who got here before we did, but they, they weren't the original inhabitants. They got here at some point in time, you know. Uh, the land was, they just be, happened to be the first ones to get here. I got, I'm just as Native American as anybody that's ever born here because I was born here. All right. The first group weren't Native here. They just showed up. Then all their group after that were, were Native Americans because they were born. We try to get so politically correct, we can't even see straight. All right. So, but you know, y'all remember the pilgrims coming over? We all drew the pictures in, in elementary school. The guys with the big hats on, the big belt buckles, and you know, and, and they look they look kind of funny in the wilderness, dressed that way. And then you got all the Indians there, and they all come. Of course, they all had turkey and, and stuff, and stuffing and mashed potatoes. How did they? I, I don't know how turkey got associated. Maybe I, I'm really not sure how turkey got associated. I didn't study that out in history be, with Thanksgiving the way it is, but I'm glad it is. Yeah, can, 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 I got a witness there. I got two turkeys. In the I had the 47-cent pound, about $25 more. I did that twice. We got one that's 21.76 pounds. We got another one that's 22.53 pounds. We would eat all of it in various forms. It'll be, you know, sliced turkey on Thanksgiving Day and on Christmas Day. And then there's going to be turkey salad and turkey hash and turkey this and turkey that. Yeah. Glory. Amen. And lots of naps because the way tur what's in the turkey make you sleepy. Hallelujah. I I'm going to sleep through the Dallas football game because I don't care who wins. But notice he said here, be, don't be anxious, but with prayer, we're entering into God's presence. We're getting, in, we're getting along with him. We're opening everything on the altar of supplication. We're making requests. Hallelujah. And then with thanksgiving, and that's what we're really focusing on, is that grateful heart. Amen. Are you here? We're, we're giving that grateful heart, hallelujah, that we're, we are, our heart is grateful for all that God has done, all that God has accomplished in our life, for the plan of salvation. You, you can't, even if God asks you to do something that you really don't want to do and you've got to make an adjustment, you've still got to be grateful for everything he's done. Yeah. Now, I've heard people make these statements life. People that I talked to that were in this church at one time. I'm mad at God. Who in the world do you think you are? Well, that sounds really cool that you could be mad at God. You can't, you, you don't have a right to get mad at God. He saved your back end. Hello. He kept you from going to hell. And you will come and talk, I'm mad at God. Man, if I, if I wanted to pastor, I'd slap you for saying such a stupid thing. We always have to be grateful toward God. Well, he's asked me to do something I don't want to do. But don't you know that whatever God tells you to do, whether you like it or don't like it, it's for your benefit? No matter what it is. Anything that God asks you to do, it's going to be for your good in the end. You may not, you may not be able to see it now, but it will be. Amen. I don't want to quit my job. I don't want to give up soda. I don't want to quit going to do this. And I don't want to quit doing that. Yeah, but if the Lord's doing it, you can keep your grateful heart. Like I said, he saved your back in. Amen? And that's as colorful as I'm going to be about that. Okay? Hallelujah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You've, been, you've heard people say it. I'm like, what, right, what, what gives you the right to be mad at God? If you're going to be mad at anybody, be mad at the devil. He's the one messing everything up all the time. God's never messed up. He's trying to fix stuff all the time. Amen? So, we're going, and, said, and this, he says, uh, with thanksgiving, with a grateful heart, let your request be made known unto God. Listen to the next verse. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he goes on into the, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure thing. Notice that the peace of God, I'm going to tell you, it's so important to have peace. When you're, when you're walking with God, it's important to have peace. Somebody say amen. amen. We, don't, we don't want disruption. We want peace. Uh, I remember a number of years ago. Um, I'm trying to think, I, I don't remember. Well, Nathan was a little bitty fellow. I guess he was about three or four. And him and my grandfather had this real just connection that was nonverbal. 
you know, we go, we go see my granddaddy. And at that, you know, when Nathan was old enough to walk and stuff, granddaddy was on, was on oxygen and, and stuff. He had had uh, not quadruple, but five bypasses, Qu quintuple or whatever, bypass, huh? Quintuple. quintuple, all right. Bypass surgery when he was uh, 65. They bypassed five, five, you know, for how, and East Carolina was doing stuff like that all the time back then. Well, you got to understand, back, back down in Eastern Carolina, they smoked and they ate barbecue, pork barbecue. East Carolina was the number one heart um, bypass surgery hospital in the country. Because we, 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 we drank, uh, we ate barbecue all the time. I, I, I worked at Parker's Barbecue for eight years. I had some people who would show up every single day at 9 o'clock in the morning and get a barbecue plate. That was their breakfast. And that barbecue plate was just a, was, was a round pie plate, half barbecue, half coleslaw, and three corn sticks. The small one, the large one was bigger on top. It was thicker. <laughs> and the, you know, there was more barbecue on, on that thing. Breakfast. Yep. So, granddad, you know, so, you know, he'd been, he had been comedian for, on comedian for years. But, uh, you know, by the time, you know, Nathan was about four or so, um, we'd go see him, and he'd sit there, and he'd kind of get up on the edge of his recliner, and Nathan would go stand between his legs and play with his hands. And they, they just had this kind of bond, you know? They just, they, they just, they just did. And uh, they, could, they could just, without even saying a word, they could just kind of bond. And it was just, it was just adorable. And the girls loved him. Mean, he loved the girls. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, but it's just they had this kind of weird, you know, grand, grand, great grandfather, grandson thing. And um, I remember we were going to go on vacation. I'm telling you, no matter what we did, I tried everything I could to make it work. The whole time there was there was there was something, and I'm just trying to make this vacation work. And I'm thinking, you know, what in the world is going on? I'm just getting agitated about the fact I'm agitated. Yeah. And finally, I just said, forget it. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. All of a sudden, peace came. <laughs> like, okay. Two days later, my grandfather had a stroke. And uh, we wouldn't have been, we would have been, I, th I forgot where we were going. We would have been so far away, we, would, we wouldn't have gotten back. And um, I forgot where, we, I don't remember where we were going. We were just going somewhere. And it was, it was pulling the pop-up. We were going somewhere in the camper. And, um. And, um, and that was, and it was like a Friday or a Saturday. I couldn't go. Janie went down with the kids and um, saw him, you know, and he was sitting up in bed, and Nathan was over there holding his hand, playing with his hand, and he just, he, can't, he couldn't talk. It was, a, it was a really bad stroke. You have, if you're on blood thinners and you have a stroke, it's just, it's not good. Because it, it, you have a heart, because you know, one of the things you want to do is stop the bleeding of the stroke, and it just keeps going because it won't coagulate. You've got your own such thin blood thinners so that. And, um, and, and then I pray, Lord, Lord, keep him here. Just keep him here long enough for me to get to Greenville and, um, so, I, so I can see him. And, um, the, you know, um, I'm trying to remember. I drove down like the next day. He had, he had gone back out. He wasn't awake. And I uh, got to go in and, and say hi to him and, you know, and tell him I, I loved him and he could go on. You know, he, he died the next day. Uh, but I, I just wanted to get there and tell him that, you know. Um, but we would have been gone. I wouldn't have, we wouldn't, none of us would have had that. The kids got to see him. The last time they really got to see him, he was sitting up in bed, smiling at him and that kind of stuff. So they'll always have that. They, they wouldn't have had that, all three of them. They loved their great papa. He, he, was a, he was a neat man. He was short, but he was neat. Hallelujah. And uh, had lots of old stories. He remembers Greenville when you came up to where Menji's Coliseum is. It was a dirt road up to that point, and they had a cow gate. You had to stop your vehicle or whatever your car or whatever you were driving, get out, open the gate, drive through, get out and close the gate to go into town. <laughs> That's, I'm telling you. you now, listen, I can show you where that, where that railroad track is and where that is. I can show you the green where that is. And he was telling stories about when he was, a, when he was young and, and just started driving. That's what you had to do to get into town. There was a cow gate. There was a gate to keep the, you know, to keep the cows out of the town. Hallelujah. But the whole point of that was, I just had, I, was, I didn't have any peace. I wanted to go on that vacation. We had planned it for months. We, you know, we were really excited. And he had this agitation, couldn't go, couldn't go, couldn't go. And finally just quit and said, okay, I'm not going and got peace. Yeah. So I've learned something. When you, when you keep everything right with God, you pray and you supplicate and you keep a grateful heart, the peace of God will keep you. 
I said, the peace of God will keep you. So then you can do what? You can follow peace when you got peace in your heart. Now, you can have peace in your heart with the whole world messed up around you. Have you ever saw the Bruce Lee movie? I forgot which one it was. I can't remember if it was Enter the Dragon or Return of the Dragon or, you know, the, the, the Last Dragon or whatever. I don't remember what it was. A lot of dragon movies that, that he was in. But he, he gets in this room and they've, got, they've surrounded him. They've got all, they've been, finally he's, he's, he's about taking out, everybody he could take out with the nunchucks and all this stuff. And they finally get in there and they've got all these swords around him and there's nothing for him to do. He puts the nunchucks around his head, sits down and he gets in his little position and just sits there. Everything around him is messed up. So you, when you're following the peace of God, it's not like, see, see, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, my peace I give unto you. And it passes understanding. So you can have peace in the midst of the storm. Can you say amen? But you can't do that until you've done what? You've entered in and put it all on the altar. You've made your request to God. You have a grateful heart. So we're coming up on our Thanksgiving. It's a time for us to be reminded of how grateful we are to God. Stop looking at what we don't have, what we wish we could have, how much we wish we could make, how we wish we were in a different place in life, this, that, and the other, and have a grateful heart to God for what he's done for you. Amen? I said amen. amen. You know, um, trying, I'm trying to think of that statement that's, that's made that... Um, when Jesus is talking about not, not taking thought for the morrow, for, for, evil, uh, for, the, for the evil is sufficient for the day, you know, you know, if we got raiment and clothing and food, let us, you know, we ought, we ought to be grateful that we, we got food. The people on welfare in our country live better than most people in third world countries. I mean, more, better than most people. Those who are even out making money and stuff. I'm telling you, I went to the Dominican Republic one time about... Um, 1982 or 83, maybe 83 or 84, and uh, I'd never seen three rooms in a path with 10 kids. Not three bedrooms. We went three bedrooms, two and a half bath. They had three rooms and a path. Y'all get the path? It goes out to the outhouse. There's one outhouse we saw down there that, uh, you know, the walls were moving. It was dark, you couldn't see. We got a flashlight, look, they were covered in cockroaches. I mean, the whole, all, the whole wall, it was like a few cockroaches. The wall was a moving mass of cockroaches. La cockroach, la cockroach. Lots of cockroaches. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Pastor John asked for a bright flashlight, and that's when he found out what it was because he put it on there and went, oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I decided to, to find another outhouse. <laughs> You know, we, with the three rooms in the back. We have nothing to be unthankful for in this country. You got people out protesting. The North Carolina Workers Group. They're, they're a bunch of communists. Just figure, figure it out. They're protesting Walmart because the Waltons are ripping people off. You ought to be thanking God you've got a job in this economy. Hello? You ought to be thanking God you've got a place to work. And that you've got a roof over your head. And there's food on your table. Hallelujah. Glory to be to instead of out, you know, demanding that you get paid $15 an hour. For what? Because yeah. right. if it's going to happen, you start, if, the, if the minimum wage goes to $15 an hour, half of you are going to lose your jobs. Yeah. And they're going to demand the people who get to $15 an hour to do the work for $15 an hour. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They came across my feed the other day. They're, they're advertising. And it, it says you're on there because of, you know, uh, likes and stuff on Facebook, and I'm thinking, I ain't never liked nothing that would have made me get on my Facebook. Yeah. So I told them to take their communist, I actually said Marxist garbage and move to North Korea. <laughs> you, you really want to know what communism is like and, and, and extreme socialism is like? Go ahead and move to one of those countries and see how well you, don't, don't think you won't get back to this country and kiss the ground you walk on. Yeah. I've been in some of those countries, and man, I couldn't wait to get back in this country and say, thank God for America. Yeah. Been there. I've been in some places. I've been in the Dominican. I've been in third world or, or, or uh, uh, former Russian countries that were just dilapidated after, after communism fell. And you saw what communism was hiding yeah. in the background. I've been in those places. 
Been in Thailand where you got a castle here and a guy living in a cardboard shack right outside his wall with Pepsi crates as his walkway of the swampy water to get into his little cardboard shack. I've been there. Thank God for America. Thank God for where, see, the devil hates America. He wants to destroy this country. But thank God, he, he, God raised it up as a place to preach the gospel. You better be thankful you live here. Uh, how many of you know Ed Elliott? Ever heard of Ed Elliott? Okay, well, Ed, you know, Ed was sharing a story with us one time. I think he even shared it from the pulpit, but he had gone to Africa, and he, he carried a girl from Chicago, went on the crusade team with them, an African-American girl. She went with them, and she, one night they're down at the altar. And I, and he's just repeating what she said. And I'm, you know, just, I'm not, can I say stuff without being called a racist? Thank you. He said that girl came to the altar one night and was just screaming, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing my parents to be, come over here as slaves and endure what they endured so I could be born in America. Wow. Because after she saw how the men treated the women in those countries, she's great, grateful to God she lived in America. She was just praising and thanking God that just like Joseph had been taken into captivity and delivered a nation, she had been taken into, her forefathers had been taken into captivity and delivered their whole, those generations from that kind of lifestyle. We need to be thankful to God for our country. And we need to be proud of it from the day we're born. Instead of getting to some point and saying for the first time in my adult life, I'm proud of my country. We need to have a grateful heart. Thank God for this nation. Because if you've seen some of the stuff in those countries, if you haven't traveled, you haven't seen, you don't know. Well, I think it's all pretty cool. Yeah, until you dig under the surface. I said until you dig under the surface. Then you find out a whole lot of stuff. And it ain't all that great. Did you know Thailand's one, is like one of the number one places in the world for child sex trade? But the king lives in a palace, and you can't speak against the king because he's a god. And they take offerings from the people every year. And one year he got $50 million in an offering from the people because he's a deity. So the first thing he told me when I got off the plane is don't say anything about the king. People here will kill you if they hear you say something about the king of Thailand because he's a deity. Aren't you glad? We can have political discourse and we can say stuff and say, I don't like my president. I don't like him. I don't like his policies. And when the next guy gets in, the other people say, I don't like that president. I don't like his policies. And we can say, and no Gestapo will yet. We better, we better start, the, you know, people trying to take your liberties away. You know, no Gestapo shows up and shoots you for speaking against the president. I'm grateful for my country. Thank God for it. It's not perfect, but it's better than anything on this planet. And I've traveled a good portion of the planet. I know some stuff. It's better than anything on this planet. Do we have things we ought to fix? Sure. But I'm glad I got this one. I sure don't want to have to fix the problems in the other countries. Somebody say amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.